Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm here to share an incredible work with you. Just a quick reminder before we get started. All sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find the link in the episode description as well as on our Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Welcome to Season 9 of Accessible Art History, the podcast. We're now moving into the 20th century. At this point in art history, there are numerous movements and ideas swirling around at the same time. So instead of focusing on a single type of art, I'm going to bounce from one topic to the next. It might seem a bit chaotic, but it's a great way to cover all of the incredible works from the last century. To kick things off, I'm going to discuss Les Demoiselles de Avignon by Pablo Picasso, painted in 1907. He is one of the most iconic figures from the century, as he encompasses and invented many different styles. Jarring, erotic, and bizarre are just a few of the words that describe this piece. So to learn more, keep on listening. This piece was originally known as the Brothel of Avignon. Now the title is a little politically more correct at the Young Ladies of Avignon. There are five women being shown, each completely nude. The woman on the far left is shown in profile, a callback to ancient Egyptian art. The next two women are shown with faces in the Iberian style, This culture predated the Roman occupation of Spain and dates from around the 2nd or 3rd century BCE. It was used by Picasso to honor his homeland. Finally, the final two figures are shown with mask-like features. This was inspired by African masks that Picasso had recently encountered. Although the women have different faces, there are a few similarities as well. Each one is confronting the viewer, almost daring them to say something. In addition, they are each constructed of sharp angular lines and triangles, for there is no sense of setting, light, or shadow just harsh lines. As I mentioned a moment ago, this work is meant to show a brothel. An interesting fact is that poet and art critic Andre Salmon was the one who came up with a new name. Picasso never liked it, and he always referred to the work as my brothel. This particular subject was shocking to viewers, as sex work was not something that was discussed in, quote, polite society. However, that is what art is about, pushing boundaries and making statements. It is important to note that Avignon doesn't refer to the city in France, it actually refers to the street in Barcelona where there were a lot of brothels at Picasso's time. There are three major influences on Picasso's work, Spanish art, African and Oceanic art, and fellow artists. As I mentioned earlier, Picasso was Spanish, so it's no surprise that he was influenced by centuries of artistic tradition. One of the biggest from this country was El Greco. He was a Spanish mannerist artist from the late 16th and early 17th centuries. In particular, the breaking of the fifth seal influenced the composition style and lack of setting. Secondly was the influence of Oceanic and African art. Due to colonization in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, these styles made their way to Western Europe. Books and exhibitions made this art accessible to Western artists for the first time, which is likely the way that Picasso experienced it. At the time, this was referred to as, quote, primitism. However, I personally dislike and don't use this term, except in this case to explain its history, because it implies that non-Western art is less than or worse than Western art, when in fact, it's just different. Cultures all have their own ways of expressing beauty, and all should be celebrated. Finally, Picasso was influenced by his fellow artists, Paul Gauguin and Paul Cezanne. They were both post-impressionist artists who were involved in the avant-garde. The works are characterized by flat composition with sharp angles and the influence of non-Western art. Picasso would go on to continue their work. Next, we're going to dive more into the elements of this piece. But first, let's take a quick break. Hey there, my name is Annalisa, and I'm the founder of Accessible Art History. As a part of my content offerings, I produce a podcast. For the first several seasons, I will be discussing 50 objects that shape the history of Western art. From prehistoric cave paintings to contemporary art, I'll be covering it all. The podcast was designed for everyone, from the casual couch historian to a museum's expert. It all fits within the larger mission of accessible art history, to create a space for art history lovers, students, and anyone who is curious to explore all periods of art history and human creation. New episodes drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform. Make sure to follow the Instagram page for all updates at accessible.art.history. All 
right, now that we're back, let's take a look at the idea of feminine beauty in this piece. It's quite obvious that Picasso is moving away from the traditional, idealized female nude in this work. Instead of being soft, demure, and supple, these five women are sharp, angular, and confrontational. They challenge the viewer's gaze and are assertive in their power. It shows a dark, almost angry viewpoint of sex work and femininity. Although this new style of art didn't focus 100% on beauty, it still objectifies women as sexual objects. Many art historians mark Les Demoiselles de Avignon as the beginning of both Cubism and the modern art movement. However, this isn't exactly the case. As I discussed earlier, Picasso was heavily influenced by his fellow artists. Their works weren't Cubist in nature, but they were moving towards modernism. So I believe it was a combination of these two things that give Picasso the recognition as one of the first in the movement. I think an excellent explanation of this was written by art historian Douglas Cooper in his book, The Cubist Epoch. The Demoiselles is generally referred to as the first Cubist painting. This is an exaggeration, for although it was a first major step towards Cubism, it's not yet Cubist. The disruptive, expressionist element in it is even contrary to the spirit of Cubism, which looks at the world in a detached, realistic spirit. Nevertheless, the Demoiselles is a logical picture to take as a starting point for Cubism because it marks the birth of the new pictorial idiom, because in it Picasso violently overturned established conventions, and because all that followed grew out of it. To put it bluntly, people really didn't like Les Demoiselles when it first debuted in Paris. Firstly, Picasso only showed it to his closest friends in the 10 years following its creation. Finally, in 1916, he allowed it to be shown at an exhibition. Sergei Ivanovich Shukin, an art critic that attended, called it a, quote, loss of French art. Fellow artist Henri Matisse was furious with Picasso because he assumed Les Demoiselles was painted to mock the modern art movement. But the most scathing review came from Le Cri de Paris. He has painted, or rather daubed, five women who are, if truth be told, all hacked up, and yet their limbs somehow manage to hold together. They have, moreover, piggish faces with eyes wandering negligently above their ears. An enthusiastic art lover offered this artist 20,000 francs for this masterpiece. Monsieur Picasso wanted more. The art lover did not insist. So who was the man behind the work? Pablo Picasso was born October 25, 1881, in Malaga, Andalusia, which is in southern Spain. His family was in the middle class and were descended from minor Spanish nobility. Picasso's father was also a painter, as well as an art professor and curator at a local museum. Showing a penchant for art at a young age, Picasso's first word was lapis, or pencil. His parents recognized his talents and encouraged him. When he got old enough, they sent him to Madrid's Real Academia de Bellas Artes de San Fernando, but he didn't really like formal education, so he just stopped going to class. While in Madrid, Picasso frequented the Prado Museum, where he encountered El Greco for the first time. He moved to Paris in 1900, and this is where he found the group of artists to live and work with. His work is often classified by periods named after characteristics of the pieces. They are as follows. The Blue Period, which was from 1901 to 04, showed sad paintings that are predominantly blue or blue-green. He often shows sick mothers, sex workers, and depressive episodes. It could have been influenced by his friend's suicide. From there, he moved to the Rose Period, which was 1904 to 06. These are lighter, brighter works, an inclusion of heavy uses of orange and pink. He features circus acrobats and comedic elements. It was definitely a shift in tone. Proto-Cubism, which was 1907 to 09, is where Les Demoiselles de Avignon falls into. He transitioned for the next 10 years into the Cubist movement, which was geometric, neutral toned, and had angular compositions. After that, from 1919 to 1929, Picasso traveled to Italy for the first time and was influenced by Renaissance masters. He gave them a modern flair and moved into surrealism. His later works for the rest of his life, from 1930 to 1973, he continued to experiment with different art styles and combination of his previous styles. He was harassed by the Nazis in Paris in World War II, but continued to work in art. Pablo Picasso's personal life was quite tumultuous. He was married twice and had a plethora of mistresses in between. From these relationships, he had four children, Paolo, Maya, Claude, and Paloma. He was heavily inspired by his romantic partners, but their relationships cost some of the women their sanity and even their lives. Some suffered nervous breakdowns while others committed suicide. Despite his affinity for women, Picasso was deeply misogynistic. He was quoted as saying that there were only two types of women, goddesses and doormats. 
Picasso's career was quite prolific, and his works can be seen in museums all around the world today. Some of his most famous works besides Les Demoiselles are Guernica, The Old Guitarist, and The Portrait of Gertrude Stein. He died at the age of 91 on April 8, 1973. This work, Les Demoiselles de Avignon, represents the continuation of art and the first steps towards what we consider modern art. It's fascinating, complex, and a bit confusing. But art is meant to make you think. Make sure to tune in next week when I discuss The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out for our next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform.